Hello everybody and welcome back to Coombe Valley Campers. Today we are filming on the 2K T5 and in particular fitting these fantastic new glass double glazed windows from Motorcraft Adventure Developments. Just want to say thank you to A-Plan Modified Van Insurance for sponsoring this series of Coombe Valley Campers. We actually have the 2K T5 insured with A-Plan Modified Van Insurance because they will insure your vehicle from the moment you buy it until you convert it to a camper van and beyond. And if you would like a special rate for your next policy, mention Coombe Valley Campers at the time you're asking for a quote and they will sort you out. So ever since we started the channel back in 2019, we have been asked to do a window fitting video. And in reality, we could have done, but they, there are hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube on how to fit windows to this van and any other. And we were waiting for something rather special, I guess. And today we have got these fantastic glass double glazed units from Motorcraft Adventure Developments, and we are going to be putting them into a T5. These windows in particular are designed to be universal for vans. Now as a bit of a backstory, Motorcraft Adventure Developments build huge box body coach build trucks. We're talking the huge four x four man trucks, eight by eights, things that will travel the world, um, huge, huge expedition vehicles. But they have decided to manufacture a window that is more universally acceptable onto a van such as a T5, T6, or even uh, Transit Custom, the medium sized vans. And this window in particular is 950 mil by 450 mil and will fit perfectly within the window aperture itself. So why have I decided to go for a window like this? This build in particular is going to be function over form. Yes, I could fit a sliding window here, which will give ventilation, but any of you out there who have camped before, traveled before, know that a sliding window in particular is not particularly brilliant when you're living in your vehicle. You can open the window, you can let a bit of air and ventilation in, but in reality, the weather is gonna get inwards. Whereas this window, much like you see on a motorhome or caravan, in all honesty, is opening. And the big difference with this one, it is fully double glazed glass. We have a near 90 degree open angle, which I think is wonderful. And the fact that it can fit into a van this size and be glass and be UK manufactured is a huge bonus as well. So let's get down into the nitty gritty of this window. As I mentioned before then, these windows are particularly special and we've gone for this glass version over a regular motorhome style polycarbonate double glazed window, basically because of the properties this glass window is going to give us. They are manufactured in the same manner as a household window, so they're double glazed in an aluminium frame filled with an inert gas but they are built with automotive grade glass, which is toughened and they're all uh, EN marked and they're certified for vehicle use. And we've used, the, we've gone for these, like I said, because a regular bonded window just doesn't hold the same thermal properties. You can go to the greatest lengths sound deadening and insulating your van, your camper, whatever it may be, but in some manner, you may let yourself down by fitting a single pane window. A polycarbonate window versus a glass window again it does have the inert gas in it it is does have the thermal properties but with the glass one they're scratch resistant they're tougher and the security involved as well it's an aluminium frame uh, there's anti-theft properties within the frame and i'll go into that in a minute um, but not only are there the insulative properties but the acoustic properties also again much like a household with double glazing you will find that the soundproofing of these windows is above and beyond compared to a polycarbonate window. So this window in particular, we have a width of 955 mil. They're advertised at 950, but they have a little lip and a return on the edge. But if I'm taking it as I see it right here, that's a 955 mil across the length or width and the height itself 
advertised at 450, but actually here I can see a 455 mil in height on the window as well. I've had a quick check of the inside of the van. They're gonna fit in lovely, but why don't we just go in there, check out the measurement, and then I can show you how I'm gonna go about locating this very square shape into this curved and tapered side of the van. So we had a 955 width and a 455 height. The actual internal dimensions of the inner frame is 100 mil, exactly. And top to bottom, that is 495. So we know we're gonna have 25 mil either side of that window aperture, perfect. And then, what did I say? Yeah, so it's 455, we're gonna have about the same top and bottom as well. So what I'm gonna be doing now in terms of fitting this window straight is finding basically the center of this window and making a hole through to the side of the van and then I know that is my center point on the outside of the van. And to make sure, and we've tested this on another vehicle who came to us with a motorhome style window in, it was uh, a Danbury conversion on a T5 or something similar. And the only point at which we could find the window, or the only point at which we could find a level on the van was actually the rail, the actual seam at the bottom of the vehicle. It's the true flat point across the whole car. So you can't take the ridge line across the middle, you can't take the ridge line at the roof height or the top of the window height or at the top of the roof line itself. Actually, the only straight point itself is across the bottom of the van and that's where we're gonna be taking our measurements from. Trial and error on this one. It's the first time I've fitted a window like this. Um, I think the next stage is, let's find the center point here, drill a hole all the way through and go from there. So after a bit of measuring, and the way I've measured is by using this long stainless ruler. I've been laying the ruler flat against this section and then moving it up and with no real pressure just until it touches. Letting the ruler touch the top of the frame. The center point of the window is 283 mil, top and bottom. So I've done the same here, I've laid the ruler flat just let it drop down till it touches. It's 283 mil until the middle of that window, top to bottom. Width ways, I've done exactly the same thing. I've rested the ruler on the center point until it touches the absolute edge of this inner window aperture, this bit here. On one side, it's 501 mil. And on the other side, 501 mil. So I can now confidently say that right there is the center of the window. Now, what I'm gonna do is get a three millimeter, no, do you know what? I'm gonna go for a two millimeter drill bit and drill right into that center until it comes through to the other side. Then from that point, I will measure with a tape measure. And that is a brand new tape measure as well. Um, from the sill, from the lowest point on the sill that I can see, I'll use a tape measure to measure up to that point there, record that down, and then I will do a series of measurements across the width one way, and then that'll be my datum line effectively, and then I can measure north, south, east and west of that point, knowing that that will be the measurement to my cut. Let's hope it works, shall we? That is my first hole, right there. Double check if it's actually the center of this window. Uh, it's 298 mil that side. This is rough. And that's 280 that side. So things to think about, because we've only made one hole so far. In fact, if I do that to that curve, yeah, 298 that way. 
and 280 that side. So there's nearly two centimeters difference. So we may have to change this but again. We're going within the aperture of that internal window. So that doesn't really matter that much. So from this point here then to the bottom of the sill, let's have a quick look where I can measure from. I'm going to measure from where the tape measure is sitting right there. I'll get it in line. It's 125.5 centimeters on the button. So that is really good. 1,255 mil on the button right there. So very happy with that. Obviously I could go to any one of these but again, these lines all taper towards the back of the van. I could double check later on to see if they do actually all line up. But for now, I'm going from where my tape measure hits the bottom of the seal because I know that's uniform throughout the bottom of the van. So one last double check. Making sure that the tape measure's straight and pulled tight. Yeah, one, one, two, five, sorry. Yeah, 125.5 centimetres. Or 1,255 mil. Good. Now let's try and draw that line across and see how it works out. From our centre point, I have now measured fore and aft, left and right, in all directions of the dimensions we need to cut the hole. There was a lot of measuring, there was a lot of double checking, there was a lot more measuring, and then a bit more double checking, and then a lot more measuring. But we are there. We've checked the diagonals, we've checked the tops and bottoms, and they're all, I'm gonna say within tolerance, okay? Um, because the window hole we need to cut is slightly bigger than the frame, and once the window's in, we can level it slightly, much you do with a bonded window. There is some wiggle room to make sure your lines match up. It looks weird, and I'm not gonna deny that. The fact that this swage line slopes down, this roof line curves down to the back, this may look quite odd, but I know it's level with the floor, I know it's level with the sill, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I did try and measure it from the floor as well. If anybody was wondering, people looking at the camera going, "You should have measured it from the floor." I hear you. All right, because we've tried that as well. And the most effective way to measure this in this instance is to do it from a point. And I had somebody else helping me as well, and I triple checked with all the crew who were here at the time. So I think I've just got to grow a pair, drill the holes, and cut it out. First step for me then is to drill a hole in each corner with the two millimeter drill bit that I used before. This will just mark the point at which I cannot cut any further. I will then cut a bigger hole with like a step cut, a cone bit, a stepped drill bit, just as an access point for my jigsaw. I'm gonna be using a, in fact, if I get the packet right here, we have some Bosch metal cutting blades which are good for steel. They are brand new. I would always recommend you use brand new blades. Like I said, I just gotta pull my pants up a little bit and cut the hole in the side of the van. And I hope when it comes to it, you do too. Just measure, 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 and measure, and double check, and double check. Let's get on with it, shall we? As a safety or precautionary note, before doing any work on your vehicle of this nature, be sure to wear eye protection and ear protection. When it comes to protecting the outside of your van, be sure to masking tape off and shield all areas of your van that you don't want covered in metal shavings, and that includes the inside as well. So if you've got some units or furniture or some nice flooring or anything the other side, make sure it's covered so no metal, hot metal bits and pieces will be going in to your van. This van in particular, as you can tell, it's an absolute dog. 
We are going to be doing the bodywork. Yes, I probably could have done the bodywork first and then the windows, but again, this is all experimental. This is all first times. I didn't want to have a fresh coat of paint and then completely mess it up with a fresh window. So, protect yourself, protect your van, measure, 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 double check, measure, and then check again. And as a final note, to protect the areas of your paint outside of the cutting edge, you can tape up the bottom of your jigsaw and you can tape around the edges of your van as well. Again, for the reasons that I've already explained, I'm not gonna be doing that today. The choice is up to you. But I would recommend if it's a decent paint job, a van that you like, uh, a van that you're precious about, paintwork you're precious about, do everything you can to protect it now. You, it will pay off in the long run. big hole in my van. Right, let's do a dry fit, shall we? Let's see if she fits. 920 mil by 410. Interference fit that's really cool that's super cool there's gaps top and bottom but it is a curved vehicle so what we'll do is address that with the use of sealant and I can show you how to address that later but I am super happy with that should we go inside and see if it opens stay there That'll do. Just spent a bit of time then preparing the area for the next stage. Now, this van is oxidized, dirty. I've never done anything to the paint other than wash the van but I want to ensure that the polyurethane bond I use has got the best possible surface to stick to. So, first of all, I wash the organic dirt off using a car wash soap remover with a microfiber towel. I then went over the whole area with brake cleaner, which removes the uh, greases and grimes to remove the oxidization of the paint and the deep ingrained dirt in the paint. I used a G3 scratch remover and then um, I, once that was buffed off, I went over the whole area once more with standard thinners. And that is really to just get all of those last bits of grime, grease, and even the G3 may have left some deposits behind as well. So that is now a completely bare, raw paint surface. The G3 that I used to remove the oxidization would have been a light, a very light key for the paint as well. So what we're left with is a clean hole. Oh, also you would have seen I filed the whole window as well. So that before I did any of the cleaning, I made sure to get on all the edges with a file, uh, which, ensure, which ensured any barbs um, or sharp points were gone. And that just cleans up that edge nicely for the next stage. The next stage now is gonna be just to put a bit of paint around the edge. You can use anything you like. You could even use the, um, black primer that comes with many window bonding kits. I don't have that, 
I'm, or today I don't have that, I'm gonna be using just a white automotive paint. I'm gonna spray from a can into a uh, paint lid. I'm just gonna use a small brush, paint around the edge. Whilst that's drying, um, I will prepare the rest of the area, clean the van, ready to bond the window in, just so I know everything's clean and prepared, ready for that next stage. Now the paint around the edges has dried, we're gonna move on to the next stage, which is gonna be preparing the area to bond the window in. Normally on a bonded window, you don't need to prepare so much. Um, you just need to sort of mask off, not mask off, you just need to know where you're gonna be bonding, push the window in, and the edge of the glass will sort of conceal your bond. With this one in particular, we are fitting a flat frame into a curved van, which means we're gonna have an excess of bond at the top, and at the bottom. We're gonna be using a U-Pole Tiger Seal, which is a polyurethane bond. And yes, people might cry out that it's the wrong type of uh, polyurethane bond, but I have been reassured by the manufacturers of the window that any polyurethane bond, um, which is waterproof and doesn't shrink, is a good polyurethane bond for these windows. And that's what I'm gonna use. I've been using U-Pole Tiger Seal for years and that stuff like, sticks like the proverbial to a blanket and it gives a good result and I've never had anything come unstuck because of it. So today I'll be using Tiger Seal. What we'll do is pop the window into the frame. Then we're gonna mask really tight around the edge of that frame on the paintwork. And then we're gonna be masking, a, then we'll pop the window out and then mask around the edge of that window. That will ensure that once we've put our bond on the window, push the frame into this hole that we've cut, and then we smooth out that bond to ensure that we've got a really nice finish all the way around. Once you remove that tape, there will be minimal cleanup to the polyurethane. And as you may know, polyurethane bond can be an absolute pain. Do excuse the horses walking by. The polyurethane bond can be an absolute pain to clean up afterwards and give a good result. So doing the prep work now will save you time in the future. The area that we don't want sealant leaking onto is now all masked off. And you see we've got some really nice uniform corners there, so very happy with that. Now it's on to uh, masking the frame. Again, I don't want any sealant to go round this frame. So I will be masking up as tight to the edge as possible. We are using black sealant, so if there is overspill, which is likely, it won't be too obvious. It's not like I'm using white on a black frame. But once that's masked off all the way around, I'll flip the window over and we'll do the fun part. Getting sealant everywhere. On this window, there is a very nice return all the way around. Now, Motorcraft make these windows for their large expedition vehicles, and the reason these windows are different and designed for vans is because actually this return lip is so much smaller, I believe, on a motorhome or expedition van build, these window frames are actually 40 mil. They're really big, which gives you lots of sealant, lots of contact area great to put in, stay weatherproof, etc., etc. We're going on a thin vehicle. Um, the windows need to be smaller. They found a way to reduce the overall size of the window and that's to give a nice lip, but that's still enough for a nice fat bead of polyurethane sealant. And that's what we're gonna do today. Again, we've got the U-Pole Tiger Seal. That is a polyurethane adhesive sealant. Um, seals and bombs permanently can be overpainted. So that's good for us in the future. Uh, bearing in mind, we're gonna to have to be painting this van. I'm not going to use the tip as standard. I'm actually going to make it a really nice wide open end. But what I'm also going to do is add 
a triangle on that as well. And what that will do is as I squeeze out the sealant, I can run the tip along the window edge like this, and it will leave a nice sort of pyramid ridge of sealant all the way along. So it's a really nice large contact patch. I'll be starting my sealant run from the bottom center. Um, sorry, that is a lie. I'm going to be starting my sealant run from the side and going up towards the top, going all the way around. And then when I come back to this point, I will overlap going inside the window frame. So the sealant will start going up this way. So my, my end of my, the end of my bead will look like this. And then when I return back up, the other end of my bead will go like this. So if any water does want to get in, it's not gonna creep up and past that sealant ridge nor can it seep up this way if I was to start the join in the bottom. So starting at the side, overlapping them, and then I can uh, stick the window in. We don't need as much sealant here because there's a contact patch about this much of where it is very, very close to the van. So I'll be able to stretch that out a little bit thinner, but definitely on the bottom and top edges, I need to make that a nice big fat bead because there is you know, a maximum of about seven or eight mil gap between the edge of the window and the skin of the vehicle. So modified tip, I'll break that seal, pop it in the gun, let's get on with it. So I just made a silly mistake. We're using black, not white. Um, I should have been able to tell that by the black and white tips on the bottle. We have a huge box of this. So I just picked out what was closest. Pays to look, pays to pay attention. Now the hole is in that. Pop it in the gun. Make sure I've got a clear area all the way around my work area. Set the speed. And once I'm ready, we'll make a start. That went well, however, I made a bit of a mess, but you can see the importance of the masking tape. Um, what I have now realized, although I have done a very nice big bead all the way around, and that's made great contact all the way around the body, there are areas I've got to fill in because that is quite, quite the gap, top and bottom. It doesn't look that bad when uh, you just sort of mock it up, but of the first run round was one can of um, Tiger Seal. And now I'm on tube number two. I've kept the same tip on because it's nice and big, but I'm gonna turn it upside down and run the bead directly into that gap and fill it up really, really nicely. Now it'll give me enough to squidge in and smooth out. creating a nice bond and a smooth finish. When it came to the cleanup, I was able to smooth out all of the edges to a point where there was enough excess material removed to the point at which when I removed the masking tape, I actually got a super clean edge all the way around. I had to mess around with some little bits and you can see me using brake cleaner and a microfiber towel and maybe some plastic trim tools just to get a really finite edge around the side of the window 
and overall I'm very, very happy with the result. It took some time, it took some effort, you gotta have some patience to get that edge right, however, it is completely doable. And there we have it, that is how you fit, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful camper van windows I've ever seen. That with the gloss black frame and the super clean, kind of clean, glass. The effect it gives down the side of the vehicle and the frame that it's given that, I think it's just a remarkable piece of engineering and a really, really attractive window. Plus it's got the technology in it and it's got the added benefits of um, the sound, uh, insulation, uh, the temperature and thermal properties in it. It's fantastic. But this is not the end of this video. This is part one of fitting this video. And the reason we're doing it in two parts is A, because I'm kind of learning with you, but B, I want to give this product its due, di due diligence. It comes in two parts. You've got the glass frame or the glass fibre frame with the glass inside. And then you've got the blinds with the thermal blinds with the uh, fly screen on the inside as well and I want to really finish that off nicely inside. This has really set the precedence now for this van. Uh, I'm going to make a really nice job, and that will involve doing a full height ply panel, floor to ceiling ply panel that will fit in with all the factory contours of the van, and then we'll make a super nice frame to go around that window, and then we can put the blinds, or the blind uh, cassette frame uh, on top of that as well. So I hope you like the video. I hope you like the product. These are available from Adventure Monkey. Um, I will leave a link below in the description for this product. Uh, they're made, designed and made uh, and assembled by Motorcraft Adventure Developments in the UK. Thank you so much to those guys for giving us this window and the other window for going in the sliding door. And by the time we do the next video, you will see both windows in with the frames it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. You can tell by my face how happy I am with this product. Um, like I said, it's set the standard now for this van. We've got the look, we've got the wheels, tire suspension. Now we've got the window. It's gonna be a good journey and we've only just started. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, don't forget, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, click the bell if you want further notifications of our videos and the series on this van coming up. And also, if you wouldn't mind, we would love a subscription from you. It's very easy, it's one click and it costs you nothing. Thanks very much. Thanks to Motocraft once again. Thank you to our channel sponsors. We couldn't do it without you.